thank you for joining me for Intuition, Your First Sense. This podcast, YouTube video, is to help you develop your own intuition while navigating this experience as a human, much like we all are, and to hopefully create some skill sets and have a little fun along the way. And this week's episode, we are going to talk about the concept or the prospect or the experience of feeling like you're not enough. And the reason that this is coming up is because I'm hearing it from people so much lately. And I think a lot of that has to do with all of the pressure that is happening in our world right now with all the stressors. And there's, I think it's always been there, but it's just a little bit more evident right now because we're all feeling a bit compressed. And then with the passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, people, I feel like, are feeling without uh, due north. And I can appreciate that. She, I very much respect the soul that she is and have been whew, impressed with the human that she was. Have you ever seen her workout videos? They're so amazing. And I feel like that when that happened, a little bit of our hope and a little bit of our belief in our own sustainability got rocked. And I can understand that. And yet I also feel like this is one of those moments where we are being asked to each show up and we are being asked, what are we bringing? And and what does that even mean? And I feel like a lot of the conversation, when that happens, it, it, it triggers a feeling of, Am I doing enough? Am I enough? What does enough even mean? And then I was having a conversation with a dear client and we were talking about her trajectory and what she would like to create in her life and, you know, what beliefs or things that were in the way. And, and, and her statement of she didn't want to be on a big stage. She didn't want to create this big grandiose build business. And I said, that's great. That's fine because what do you want to do? Who do you want to be? How do you want to be is way more important in this world than having a million followers or, you know, what's the impact of the 90 seconds because that's about the limit of some of our attention spans lately. So then when Ruth passed, I feel like it it kind of shattered that shell around some of us into um, feeling both bereft because there was an em- a- a- an emptiness that was experienced. And that truly is an energetic thing when someone passes and their human self is no longer in form. You actually feel a loss of that. And... I don't know that most of us are aware of that, that that's part of the grieving process to, is to understand this realm without them in it. And that must be allowed for and must be allowed to feel. And even though I don't feel she lived our, her life rather for us, yes, she lived for service, but this was her soul. She listened to her soul and what her soul wanted and how her human self could carry that out. And I just think that that's what we should honor. I'm not a big fan of people having gurus or believing that another being is of greater significance than they are. Because some of the people that I know that have contributed the most to the world weren't even aware that of this premise of being on a pedestal. And I think that the more we tap into our feeling of contentedness and knowing of ourselves and loving of ourselves, I just know that that ripples out. And the more secure you feel within yourself, the more you can model that, you can be for others. So that's where this idea and this questioning that I've been hearing about 
am I enough? Now, that's a large part of coaching is people realizing that they don't feel like they're enough, whether they say it in that context or not. Because a lot of the times I'm working with people who are exteriorly, is that a word? We're going to make it a word. Um, super successful. And yet they're feeling a lack inside. And that's exactly what am I enough is about. It's feeling and being in a lack situation. So what I wanted to talk about both in honoring um, Justice Ginsburg and connecting it because I do believe that she's can, she did model, she will continue to model in her non-physical self, a, a level of understanding of true self and how that translates to being of service, not in service. If we believe that she was here simply to serve us and to create all this change, she didn't do it herself. And I don't know her, but I feel like she doesn't believe she did either, that we recognize that if, if, if the model we follow is that she was of service, she listened to what she wanted, what drove her, and then she brought that out into the world. If, if we leave her as our only beacon or our only hope, that means that her world was in service to us, that she was in servitude to us. And that's not a healthy balance. And it's, I think, a little disrespectful. So if we look at, wow, she really listened to who she was and she could help and she moved mountains with that, um, that incredible just inner strength that she had then we can all know that that's within us too. So model it, absolutely. But think that only certain people have it? No, no, everyone has it. You have it. It's sometimes we just forget where we put it. So it's wonderful to be able to say what you don't want. Like my client recognizing, oh, I don't want all that even responsibility of being the one who is on that front stage or is creating a community or a following. Um, that's fantastic because then she can now focus on what she does well, which is support others who do want to be in that space. Hi. <laughs> um, but, but by recognizing what it is that you want or don't want, you can get a little bit closer to that. Boy, I really do feel like I matter, that I'm good, that I'm enough, that I love, and that I may never know completely who I am, but I can know how I am and of what makes me me. And it's great to be able to say, I don't know what contentedness feels like. I don't know what I want. I don't know who I am. Those are all perfectly wonderful statements because they lead to the inquiry, hopefully, of, well, what do I want? When was the last time I felt content? Um, and, and do I know something about me? I'd venture to guess, if you're old enough to log onto this podcast to bring it up and listen, that there have been times and there are there is information there that you know about yourself. It's, it's not always crystal clear. And sometimes in the murkiness, we can get a little disoriented and not know where we're heading. That is fine. Go to your question place. Um, what does it look like to feel like you're not enough? Um, well, it may look like or feel like you don't feel smart or you haven't maybe achieved what you feel like is necessary or maybe you're not doing. That's one of mine. Um, I I'll readily admit that the critic in my head often brings forth a, are you really doing enough? And enough is an interesting word. Oh man, 
I want to say in and of itself. <laughs> so I'm going to. Enough is a, is a word that is challenging in and of itself because we could say that arriving in a place of enoughness, meaning I, I, what I have around me, what my life looks like, what I know, how I connect, it's good. It's good. And that would be enough. And sometimes, you know, when you get to that place of a really good dinner and you think, I'm going to stop right here because if I eat more, I'm going to feel awful and that's not going to help me to appreciate the meal I've had. And you stop and you say, that's enough. Well, what a wonderful place that is. That's self-awareness. That's um, not possible for me with black licorice. And I know this, so I just don't buy it anymore. But that enough doesn't have to be a deficit. It doesn't have to be something where we always put something not in front of, not young enough, not smart enough, not achieving enough, um, not pretty enough or anything like that. It can be a place that is equally abundant, really, that, well, as a matter of fact, I do have enough books <laughs> behind me are... Uh, five shelves that are quite full and then in the living room well there might be four or five more shelves so I do have enough books and that's one way of flipping this to the place where you recognize that it's not it doesn't have to be a word that you avoid let's talk about it let's talk about what is enough in my world because when your brain has that measurement it might just calm its little buns down so um one way to check in is to ask yourself well when that statement comes up when that feeling comes up around any of the not enoughs. What happens within my body? Where do you feel it? For me, it tip, typically is my, my gut. Um, but where do you feel it? Do you feel it in your neck? Do you feel it in your chest? Do you get a headache? Do you get a nervousness and anxiousness? Um, where does that happen? Because the only way to shift this stuff is to look at it is to be willing to even dissect it sometimes not get lost in the dissection but just to be willing to look at it so how does it feel in your body what are the words you're actually saying to yourself how does that translate to you it does tend to come in a kind of a critical voice it does initially and then it can be shifted to a helpful place. So when I hear you're not doing enough, sometimes that's true. Like yesterday, I decided that it was a day of enough. I had done enough <laughs> for the previous month and I needed a down day. And I chose that consciously, where in the past, the critic would have been in charge. It would have been criticizing me for watching the videos I was watching, or it might have been in there um, suggesting what else could be done on the day that I didn't have appointments scheduled. And I, thankfully, because I've been working with people and doing this stuff for myself for 20 years, I've come to a place where I can look at it and say, you're cute, I appreciate you, and yet where I am right now is perfectly enough because my body needs to recharge, my spirit needs to recharge, um, my brain <laughs> needed to recharge. And that comes from recognizing the feeling coming up, being able to hear the message, address it, look at it, be kind, and then usher it on its way. It, when you're observational about your emotions and what you're feeling, you won't become so detached that you have no heart, but it gives you some space to be able to assess if what's coming up is out of old habit, because a lot of our not enough got installed in childhood or in relationships where someone led us to believe we were not enough. And we 
joined in. Like we were there in our adulthood. You can say you co sponsored that bill, but in your childhood, not, you weren't responsible for that. But that's where a lot of the messages come in. Um, Oftentimes when I was younger, um, my mother would order me to do someone else's homework and then would chastise me if I observed something later or said something, likely something I picked up intuitively. And she would say, don't be so smart. But then the next day she'd say, go do that homework that's four grades ahead of you. And that mixed message got in my head so deeply, I didn't even know it was there until I was in my 30s and I was like, whoa. And I was scared to do something. And I'm like, why are you scared? You like an adventure. And then I realized that message was playing and it's still something today that I bump up against occasionally. But being able to observe it, I can now say, okay, message installed when I was younger does not necessarily mean that I have to operate with that today. And it may take me a couple minutes to at half an hour even to shift that message along, Um, but it gets shifted and it's no longer with any angst or anger. (laughs) It was at times. So being aware of the situation you're in can bring up these feelings and And we'll bring up the feelings because we're very experiential beings. And one of the things that I also go to when someone is feeling like they're not enough is I remind you, you have a soul. And your soul came here to experience this life through a human incarnation so that we may arrive, you may arrive many years down the line in a place of self-love. And we go to, I believe, we go to self-love from self-acceptance to self-appreciation to self-love. And it's the kind of self-love where you also love others. It's not the kind where you're so self-centered that you're unaware that others exist in your sphere. So your soul chose this and it gives you this great big intuitive experience ability to be able to see, feel, hear, intuit, process energy, well then use it so that when you're feeling a little um, less than in your human sense, ask yourself, what is my soul trying to convey to me? What, it's like it has a magnet and, and we're trying to get closer and closer to that vibration of self-appreciation, self-love. So if you're feeling any kind of discord, likely your magnet is further apart. And to get it closer, you need to ask, well, what is my soul trying to convey here? Um, What am I feeling in this moment? And what am I not believing about myself that could be helpful? So if they got there through old beliefs, you are not responsible for that. If, you, if they got there through old messaging that created beliefs, you are not responsible for the implementation or the installation. You are responsible for shifting it if you want to genuinely enjoy your life. So when the messages that seem to come from a lack space of I'm not enough or comparison, which tends to feed the I'm not enough thing, stop and don't be disrespecting your soul that way. Stop and and assess and ask, okay, did I pick this up in childhood? Is this something that doesn't have to be true today? And if so, do the work, be willing to explore through coach, through therapist, through some avenue, um, self-learning, of shifting those neural pathways. So those beliefs and that critical voice is no longer in charge. You have as much power of shifting that as you do in feeding it. So each time you believe it, you feed it. So use the energy in a more efficient way and you won't be so susceptible to doubt and insecurity and a lack of of genuine appreciation or love for yourself. Um, All of this stuff is part of the human condition. It's part of our journey, I think, to be able to 
um, navigate through to give ourselves a little bit of credit and joy um, when we figure it out. So start figuring it out. And it's, I promise you, it's actually a little, it's, it's a lot of fun, but it is work. Um, and it doesn't have to all be done at once. I love those micro movements. So a little bit at a time, recognize the belief, see that it might be BS it's giving you, back up from it, find a situation where you were proud of yourself, where you have accomplished something. If it's tying your shoes that morning, I am okay with that. Um, if it's making the perfect smoothie or that you helped someone out, or that you were efficient and and you knocked out a bunch of stuff in the morning. Sometimes I can feel like I can conquer the world because I got all of my household stuff done, you know, in less than an hour. And sometimes I feel like, whew, I am invincible. I can absolutely do all that this human experience asks of me. Uh, I don't try to fly. I'm not that foolish. Um, and I do live on the third floor, so that would not be wise. Um, so, but be proud of this yourself that you recognize I can move from here and maybe you don't know how, but that's where, you know, a coach or a mentor or, you know, someone else comes in therapist, somebody teacher comes in and you recognize that you require that help. If I can't figure something out in technology, you better believe I'm looking for somebody who understands it. This is no different. So, um, you can move from where you are and create the new neural pathways where not enough then becomes, huh, I am abundant in my life. Um, and if you can't find a place, look to nature. Nature is very abundant. It, we have all these horrible fires and everything that are going on right now. And nature's not going to lament about that. It's going to come in right behind and start using that ash to create some beautiful saplings and growing and everything. So sometimes when I can't find it within myself, I look to nature and I'm like, okay, I got this resiliency. So look and you can find the abundance where not enough was and start with the statements of I am capable. I remember when I, you know, kicked out those household chores in an hour. I remember when I had the solution to a work uh, situation and I didn't even know I had that solution. It just dropped in. So the, the idea of feeling enough or feeling valid or feeling capable or exuberant in joy in your life, I do believe that that's a soul desire for all of us to feel that we just all have very different ways of being there um, and it's up to us to be the treasure seekers to see what matters to us and 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 what lights us up in order to do that so some of the consequences of n not doing this is we are constantly doing because we feel like we're not enough. So you're constantly chasing something and then that doesn't necessarily fill you up or, or feel good um, and not feeling satisfied with what you've already achieved. And sometimes I'll think, um, well, I'd really like to honor the fact that not only myself, but all the helpers I have in spirit and all the people I have around me, if I have a hard time doing it for myself, I'll kind of lean on that a little bit and feel appreciative um, to everybody who agreed to travel this experience with me. So, and, and if we're feeling like we're lacking in ourselves, we may never step up. We never may ask that person out or step into our full business or, or our, you know, physical life. Maybe you don't go for, oh, one of my friends just deadlifted, I think it's called 405 pounds. Well, he may still feel his own stuff inside, but that's a good example of looking at, whew, I work towards that incrementally, pound after pound of putting it on there. And I know now if I fall down, he can pick me up. So it's good. And um, a lot of the times if we're feeling a lack within ourselves, 
we will choose unsuitable partners. Like attracts like. If you're feeling, if you're looking <laughs> to the people around you and thinking, wow, they're not really getting their life together. You might want to look at home and see what's going on there because like attracts like. And we will often from a subconscious place um, choose you know, those partners or those traveling buddies that aren't in our best interest because we want to compromise our enoughness. We want to minimize who we are um, for so that we don't have to challenge it and we don't have to own it or be in it. So there's many things that can be the consequences of feeling not enough, but you know what my intention would be? It would be that you felt like what you did or how you were or how, who you were in that day, put what you did at the end there. I'd rather be who you are and how you felt about yourself and then whatever got accomplished is fine. Um, you know, ultimately we want to feel like we did the best with what we had for that day and maybe it'll grow for the next day. And that's great too, because that's that contentedness we're looking for. We don't have to be superheroes. Um, however, we do and have made a commitment to our soul that we would do the best in this lifetime with what we have. And on, our, on some Mondays, that's sitting there with a clicker in your hand. And on other days, it's affecting change in the world and really realizing that you were given an amazing body and you're going to use it to the best of its ability <laughs> for the experience. So every one of us is going to experience the I, I am not enough feeling. It has been my experience with almost every client I've worked with have great success. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about the actual feeling of not enough. And I'm just throwing down the challenge that if we all start recognizing that you are, that this invisible goal of what enough is, is just practically, it's just bullshit. Then it doesn't mean that you can't have more experience in your life and you can't have more joy and you can't expand on things, but we have to throw out the premise of not enough in order to be there. So... If you need to hold an energy like Justice Ginsburg as that person, that's fine, but don't do a comparison. Um, recognize that she likely felt this at some point in her world too and had a conversation and decided to do it anyway. <laughs> so I wish you the greatest experience of uncovering your treasures and recognizing that you are more than enough, you are amazing, and you were very brave to combine your soul and physical experience. So let's get to having some fun with it. Okay? Great. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to Intuition, Your First Sense. As always, please like and subscribe to this podcast wherever you are listening to it. Leave a review and take a minute to share it with a friend. You can find me all across social media at at Coach Vicki Baird, and you can book a virtual session with me from wherever you are in the world at vickibaird.com slash booking. That's V-I-C-K-I-B-A-I-R-D dot com slash booking. Thank you again and see you on the next episode.